hey, it's periodic perfection, and we're going to be talking about hydrocarbons. So hydrocarbons are an analogous series of um, molecules that contain carbon and hydrogen. They only have carbon and hydrogen. That's what makes them a hydrocarbon. There are alkanes, there are alkenes, there are alkynes. Here's how they are different. Alkanes, between their carbon molecules, only have single bonds. Between their carbon molecules and alkenes, we can have double bonds, and in alkynes, we can have triple bonds. You only need to have one double bond to make something an alkene. You only have to have one triple bond to make something an alkyne. All alkanes end in the suffix ane, all alkenes end in the suffix ene, and all alkynes end in the suffix ine. Then there's also a prefix. The prefix refers to the quantity of carbons in the main chain of the molecule. Here, all of them, the prefix is F. And that's because each of these molecules have two carbons. The prefix tells you how many carbons you have. One carbon is meth. Two carbons is F, and so on. If you have nine carbons, your prefix is non. Four carbons is but. Once again, but as in beautiful, not but as in but. All right, so let's do a little bit of naming. Let's take a look at this molecule. First thing we're going to do is we're going to see do we have any single, double, triple bonds. And if you look at it, all of our bonds between the carbons are single bonds. That means that we have some type of alkane. All the bonds between the carbons are singles. Then we count up our number of carbons. We have one, two, three, four carbons. We go back to table P. And if we look, four carbons means that we use the prefix but. Everything with single bonds. So because of that, we use the suffix ain. So the name of this molecule becomes but ain. And that's it. And we're done. Butane. Super easy. Now, I'm going to change the structure a little bit and show you how it changes the name. If I change the structure enough, I will also change the name. So I'm going to put in a double bond. Now my first bond between my carbon and my carbon is a double bond. This will no longer be butane. The name will change. If we go back to table Q, we know that two bonds, a double bond, makes us an alkene. So this means that this molecule will now have the alkene ending. E-N-E -E tells us we have a double bond. We still have one, two, three, four carbons. So we know our beginning is still but. So we are butene. However, we have to add one more piece of information. We have to tell something about where that double bond is. Because if the double bond were in another location, like here or here, that would actually mean something different. So our double bond is between carbon number one and carbon number two. So that means that our name will be 1-butene, where this 1 tells us where our double bond is. Now I'm going to change this up one more time. We're going to make an alkyne. An alkyne would have a triple bond. So now I'm going to put that triple bond in a slightly different place. We see a different example. There's my triple bond. If I go back to table Q, that triple bond means that I'm going to be an alkyne.
So I still have one, two, three, four carbons. It means my beginning is still but, and my ending will be ein, but I need a number to tell me where that, I'm sorry, where that triple bond is. The rule for numbers is numbers always give you locations. Numbers equal locations. Just like the number of your house on your street tells you which house you live in on that street. So we want to choose the lowest numbers possible. So the triple bond is in between two and three. So the two will be in the number we use because we want it to be the lowest number possible. That's the rules. So our name will be two butine. That is how we name alkynes. Now, let's make another change. Let's talk a little bit about what happens when we have a branching hydrocarbon. I'm going to draw my carbon backbone for a molecule that has five carbons. If I go back to table Q, sorry, table P, I'll see five carbons means that I get the prefix pent. So this is going to be something pent. I'm going to put in the locations where my bonds will be, remembering the fact that in carbon, carbon will always bond to four things or have four bonds. I am going to put another carbon on what we call a side chain. This would be our side chain. It's not part of the main chain. This would be our main chain. And this carbon is outside of that main chain. We have to have a special way of naming when we get things outside of our main chain. I'm going to put my hydrogens on. Hydrogen, 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 so many hydrogens. Okay, now we're ready to start naming. We're going to look first at our main chain, which is here. We already said it has five carbons. One, two, three, four, five carbons. So this would be pent. All our bonds are single bonds, so it would be pentane. But we have this little guy hanging out, out here, and we have to have a way to put that in the name. So we look at our side chain and we see how many carbons are in our side chain. Well, we only have one carbon in that side chain. So if we go back to table P, one carbon is meth. So we know we're going to have the meth prefix in there somewhere. Because it's a side chain, side chains get the suffix eel. So this becomes methyl pentane. But we need one more piece of information, and that's to tell us where to attach our methyl group. Because attaching at two is very different from attaching at three or at four. So we use that number notation, and we have two methyl pentane. Pretty straightforward. Now, what happens if we have more than one side chain? I'm going to just draw out the carbon backbone, and I'm going to attach two carbons to this. Now, we would have our hydrogens attached at all of these attachment points, but I'm not going to show them to you because I want us to focus in on the carbons. Our main chain for our carbons is here. We once again have five. That means that we are pent. Everything is single bonds, so it is pentane. We have two side chains, one here, one here. 
both of those would be meth. So what do we do with that information? If they're both meth, that means we have two methyl side chains. But are they on the same location? No. We have one in one, two, three, four, and five. We have one here at the two location, another one at the three location. So this would be two comma three di methyl pentane. You have to have the dimethyl because there's one, two methyls. And then the numbers tell you the locations. And those are the basic rules for naming hydrocarbons.